Chapter 22. I waited and waited for Peg to return. Oh, how I waited. Where's your mama? Patsy asked Nancy at supper. She's sulking, Nancy answered. She hurt because you think she, you, she gonna poison you all. Patsy said nothing. And she did not ask Nancy to taste the food first. But Nancy put the soup tureen down, picked up a spoon, and put some soup in her mouth and swallowed. I got no fancy to die, she said. Then she stepped back and waited. Patsy served the soup and we ate. It's very good, Nancy, Will said. He sounded a lot like Pa. Nancy remained solemn in faces but nodded to Will. She liked Will, but then everybody did. I thank you, Mr. Will, and you wait and see what I got for dessert. It was a whipped salad. As she put it on the t table, Patsy waved her off. No more tasting, Nancy. Thank you. Later, I sneaked out to the kitchen where Nancy and Jane were cleaning up. Any word from your mama, Nancy? I asked. Not yet. Do you think she'll be back? She turned to me. She was big-boned and dignified. It was hard to think she'd once run barefoot across the lawns together. You want her to come back? Of course I do. So do I. Then she sighed. <sighs> but if she don't, I'll be your friend, Miss Anne. You know that. We hugged. Here's a friendship lay between us, and I was so confused. What if Governor Dunmore did free the slaves? What would we do without our people? Worse yet, what would Governor Dunmore do with them? Pa was convinced he'd sell them into slavery to the West Indies. Mama used to tell us that God has his reasons for everything. I just wish he'd let on to us on occasion is all. Peg didn't return to the next day with the horse and gig. I ran to the kitchen where I knew she'd be checking on Nancy's bread dough to ask what happened. All those poor Negroes, she said. She sat down heavily at the table. Have you eaten? No. There was a pot of stew bubbling on the hearth. I gave her a bowl and sat down too. What poor Negroes? The ones at the palace. They think this war be for them to set them free. They all around the palace waiting. Where's the governor? She laughed. <laughs> Gone. On the ship Bowie with his family. He dumped out marines into town. And he got a cannon at the palace entrance, and the mayor out there, begging the people not to attack the palace. And Neely? If the governor is gone aboard the Fowley, where is Neely? Gone to find him in his ship at the York River. The, go the governor hear that your pa be head for Williamsburg with an army. That's why he flee. I know whether to be glad of this news or unhappy. When I left her, Peg was leaning over her bowl of soup. Never did see something like the way that girl want to be free, she said Sam. Never did see something like it. Two days later, I found Peg alone in the kitchen, crying. Peg never cried. She was chopping vegetables and stopping every so often to wipe her face with an apron. Peg? I asked. She turned around and offered me a weak smile. Neely dead. Dead? She went on chopping. She got herself caught and went back to her master. He gave her eighty lashes. Eighty? I never had heard such a thing. I went weak. That's not all. After, he poured hot embers on her back. I had to sit down. I could not con conjure it in my mind. Who did such things? There were no words in me. That frail girl, who just two days ago had been here in our kitchen eating our food? What manner of people were we? Still, Peg chopped. Never did I see a girl who wanted her freedom so bad, she said. How do they stay sane, I wondered. My own mama went mad for a thimble of troubles. Are they stronger than us in their heads? I put my hand on her shoulder. I hugged her. We cried together, and the only words I can think of were, I'm going to tell Pa when he comes home. When Pa and the boys came home on the 8th of May, the first thing that caught my attention was how agitated John was. They wouldn't let us fight! He took a cup of brandy in the traveler's room. The windows and door were open to the May evening, which was like the silk we weren't allowed to import anymore. You could wrap yourself in it. But John's mood was as rough as the fabric of his hunting shirt that was hung with fringe about the shoulders and had liberty or death painted on the back. We camped 15 miles from town, he told us. A thousand of us. The Tories called, called us shirt men. And old Peyton Randolph wouldn't let us attack. So we were discharged. Only after Thomas Nelson underwrote the money they offered. My John reminded him. Dunmore threatened to shell Yorktown from his warship if we came to Williamsburg. We've accomplished what we set out to, son, Pa said quietly. We must act within the bounds of delegated authority. Like the militia up in Massachusetts? John hung at him. Pa smiled. The fighting up north requires that we meet again before we battle. At the convention in Philadelphia, and I'm a delegate to the convention. Meet. John grumbled. That's all we do is meet. Because we are an organized citizenry, Pa said, and not a ramble. Come on, let's go to supper. John excused himself from the table before supper was over and went to the barn. He was up to something. I knew my brother. As soon as I could do so without making a problem of it, I went to find him. I came upon him and Dorothea. 
in one of the empty stalls. They were kissing. I don't know why it looked wrong to me, certainly not for the reasons that would be given to any young woman of the day, but for another reason. I did not trust Dorothea. Hadn't John seen the way she had cozied up to Pa the last time she came to our house for supper? She was giggling. John had his arms around her, tight. I laughed. That night, I told Pa about Neely. He was in the front parlor, getting his books and papers ready for the Congress in Philadelphia. A large group of Hanover volunteers were coming to Scotchtown to escort him on the first leg of the journey, the day af after tomorrow. Pa? Yes, Anne, come in. Pa, I must needs speak to you. He gestured. I could sit, and I did. Pa, Mr. Estave killed Neely, Peg's niece. He whipped her, then poured hot embers on her back. I know, Anne, he said sadly. I heard. She was here, Pa, a couple days ago. Here? Yes, because Peg is her aunt. Peg took her to the governor's palace for safety, but he was gone. Then she went to find a ship and they caught her. Oh, Pa, I met her. She was so sweet and scared. How could he do such? He held me and I cried. We have sent a delegation to, this, to his place to bring him to justice, child. What justice? I pulled away from him. They'll tell him they don't consonant such, and he'll say he's sorry. And Neely is dead, Pa. He wiped my eyes. He shall be subject to whatever the courts decide, I promise you. And they'll decide nothing. Most crimes committed against slave go unpunished, he admitted. But whites are betimes tried, convicted, and punished. Still, laws against cruelty to slaves are easy to evade, Anne. Which is why he got away with it the last time. Pa, you must do something. I'll do everything I can, child. Our servants should have the strongest claim on our charity. They should be well-fed, well-clothed, nursed in sickness, and never be unjustly treated. I've stood for that, Anne. But, to our shame, others don't. And now we're fighting a war, and must become free ourselves first. But I'm sure men will bring up slavery in Philadelphia, at the Congress. Talk, I mumbled. More talk. We are civilized men, Anne. We must keep within the boundaries of the law. It's one reason I held back from attacking Dunmore at Williamsburg. Estave isn't civilized. No, but likely he was acting under the fever of the moment. That's what war does to people, Anne. And some, it brings out the latent evil in their nature, and they use it in the name of patriotism. You're a good girl to grieve. We must never close our door to the suffering of humanity. And as soon as I can, I shall visit Neely's family. Pa, there's something else. Yes, ch yes child? There's John, I blurted, surprising even myself. It had been in the back of my mind all along. Yes, he's young and spirited up, and angry. I know that, too. You can't let him go to war when the time comes, Pa. When the time comes, he'll have to obey his commanding officer. Don't worry, child. Pa, don't let him go, please. You have an urgency about you, Anne. Is there a reason? I worry for him. I know you do. As do we all worry for him, and my John, and all the good men who will make the sacrifice and go. But what I said in my speech, Anne, is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Pa. You do John an injustice by not crediting him with more courage, unless there is something here that I don't know. I haven't been home that much. My children have fair grown up without me. My dog, Charger, scarce recognized me. Tonight, he barked when I rode up. Is there something I don't know, Anne? When do you tell the truth, and when do you lie? When do you keep a secret? Do you keep it even if, when it comes out, it will hurt the person anyway? I said nothing. Not even to Patrick Henry, who held sway over learned men and made them declare for independence and march to war, who had driven Lord Dunmore onto his ship. Two days later, Pa left for Philadelphia.